So hi everybody, my name is, is Victor. Uh, I'm one of the few developers of, of the Docker engine. And today I will talk about how you could run any application on Mesos on any infrastructure using Docker. So first I will start to in briefly introduce Docker. Then I will talk about the Docker integration in Mesos O20 that uh, will be released uh, this afternoon, and then I will show a small use case. So what's Docker? When we started to make Docker, we, we had an issue that we call the matrix from hell. Basically, when you, as developers or sysadmins, we, had to, we have to ship tons of stuff, like a Redis database or a MySQL database or the Golang application to any platform, like your, it can be your Ubuntu laptop, your Mac laptop, an OpenStack cluster, or, or anything. And it's a really hard deployment problem. So to fix this, we took a look at the past, and we found another matrix from here, the matrix of shipping goods around the world. Because when you want to ship coffee grain or bottle of wine on the other side of the world, it can be complicated. Sometimes it's by plane, sometimes it's by boat. And in the 60s, the solution was found. It's the container, the shipping container. That's great because you just put your bottle of wine inside the container or, I don't know, your, your washing machine. You close the container, and then you can give it to the, to the train guy, to the boat guy, and they don't have to know what's inside the container. As long as it's a regular-sized container, they will move it around and ship it around. And then on the other side of the world, you just open your container and, uh, and you have your, your product. So this matrix was solved using the container. We decided to do the same with Linux containers. Using the same analogy, you put everything inside the container. You put your application, your dependencies, even the Linux distribution you want to use. You can bundle it inside the container. Then you give this container to your, to your CSUBS team, and they can run it on any distribution they want as long as it's running Linux. So that's why, that's how we solved this matrix. We can look at containers from two point of views. The first one is a lightweight VMs because a container has its own process, process space, its own network interface, or you can stuff, run stuff as root inside a container without messing on your host. So we can say it's a machine container because from the outside, it just looks like a, a machine, like a VM. But from the inside, it looks like CH root on steroid because you, you don't have to, to have an SBN in it. Basically, a container is just a group of isolated processes and they share the same kernel with the host. So yes, yeah, there is two, two point of view, the machine container and the application container. I'm pretty sure most of, you, most of you knew that because Mesos is using containers for a long time now. But that what is really great with Docker is our layering technology. So let's say you want to create an application with, based on Debian with Emacs and, uh, let's say, Apache. You, have, you put your base image, your Debian image, and then on top of it, you will add your Emacs, and then you will add your Apache. So as we can see here, there is now three layers. If you want to create an image with D based on Debian with Emacs and Nginx, only the first bottom, two bottom layers will be, uh, sorry, the first two bottom layers will be shared. It means there will be no uh, file system space duplication or anything because only the third layer, only the, the diff will be different. That's also great because Let's imagine you have this image on your machine and you want to download the Nginx image from our public registry. Docker will be smart enough to only download the diffs, so the download will be really fast and really quick. And that's really powerful because when you want to move a VM around, it takes like a number of gigs or anything. And with containers, you only get the diff you want, the difference you want. So it's, it's really quick to, to download containers. Of course, you can have multiple base images. So here I have Debian and Busybox, so you, you can have complicated stacks. So what's really Docker? Just a few examples. Um, runtime is 
Docker is a runtime for Linux containers. You can do docker run dash it Ubuntu bash. It will run a bash process inside the, an Ubuntu image. So as you can see here, you become root inside your container. And when you do a PS, you see only the processes inside the container. And uh, like bash is a PID one. You could also, and that's the interesting, interesting part, you could do a docker run dash d for daemon of the crushbmichael slash redis image. And this will automatically pull the redis image from the user crossbmichael on our registry and run it. So if you do that, you get the container ID because everything runs in background. And if you inspect this container ID, you see the container has its own IP, and you see that the Redis port is mapped to your host to a random port 49153. So the goal of mixing Docker and Mesos together is to be able to do Docker pool and use Docker images on your entire Mesos cluster. So Docker, it's not only a runtime, it's only a whole platform. So for example, if you have a nice uh, Go application, you can Docker pull the base Go image. We have an our registry. You can Docker run a bash inside it. You can install your application, compile it, do everything you want, put some init scripts or anything. Then you can commit this container. So basically, it will make a new layer. And then you can push back the new layer to the public registry so everybody can use your image. Or if you want, you can, you can push it to a private one. So that's how we deploy stuff using Docker. Now, let's talk about the Docker integration in Mesos. Small, small uh, timeline. Mesos started to use AXE in 2011. Uh, at that time, it was not really reliable. So they decided in 2012 to use C groups directly. And uh, it was working great, but Docker uh, started to be successful in 2013. And there was uh, preliminary work on Docker with an executor. And earlier this week, this year, um, uh, an external containerizer for Docker was created. So to sum up really quickly, it was a Python binary that was doing kind of a bridge between Mesos and Docker. So Mesos was able to talk to Docker through this uh, Python binary. It worked, but it was a bit painful to set up because on every slave, you had to have this Python binary next to your slave. So as of last week, Docker is now a first class citizen. It means that Mesos can talk to Docker directly. And that's really great. Some requirements to have this working, you, have to, you need to have uh, Mesos masters and slave to be at least 020. You need to have Docker at least uh, one auto on each slave. And you need to add Docker to the containerizer's flags on the slave. Because by default, Docker, Mesos will only use uh, like default uh, Mesos containerizer that do C groups. You need to add the Docker one if you want to be able to launch Docker Docker um, containers. So I hope you can read that the Docker integration is really great. It's really small and easy to understand. Basically, everything is based on the left side. It's a small structure with three fields. The container infostruct, it has a type a list of volumes and a Docker info. And basically, the Docker info inside, you can put the Docker image you want to use. So it's really simple. Right now, there are not uh, lots of parameters. Basically, there are volumes and in the image, but those are the most important parameters. And uh, with this, you can do wonderful things. Other small changes in the API. As you may know, the Docker images can have the uh, default command. So now in Mesos, the command value is optional. You don't have to pass one if you want to use the, the default one uh, from Docker. And also, uh, shell boolean was added in the command info struct to wrap your command with the uh, sh-c. So you can use uh, redirections and pipes and, and everything. So small note, this Docker integration works great. 
it's still young, and uh, I hope in the future some parameters will be added, some other configuration. And there is one behavior that I personally love to see evolve. It's that by default, right now, Mesos will do a Docker pull before doing a Docker run each time. So even if you have the last version locally, Mesos wants to make sure you, it's uh, really the last version, so it has to reach our public registry. So you lose a couple of seconds uh, with uh, just the ping to the registry. And it can be painful because if you want to run uh, an image from the Docker index, you will need internet access. And if you, you want to run local images, it's even worse. You need to run a private registry to, ho to host your images. So I hope stuff like that with, with, will evolve in the future, I probably with some configuration or something. But even with this, as I will show you after, you can do stuff really, really amazing. So let's uh, see the use case. I will talk about GoCover and uh, framework we did uh, with my wife. So I did GoCover a few months ago. It's a website that allows you to display the code coverage of any Go package. So to display code coverage, it requires you obviously to run tests. And running tests means running untrusted code on your server. So that's not safe at all. That's why I do it in Docker containers. So if I click on any package, it will spawn a donor con Docker container, download the code, run the test, and display the results. So that's great. It works. I did that for a few months. It was working on my server. Everything was fine, but obviously, it wouldn't scale. At some point, my machine was too small. So I had to, to add like multi-host support and multi-machines. So right now, Docker does not handle multi-host really well. So that's why I decided to use Mesos, and it worked great. So last week, I moved my whole website to use the Docker support with the early version of, uh, of Mesos. So we created a really small framework called Vault that allows you to run tasks. There is Docker support baked in, and uh, so you can run tasks. You can see the states of every task. You can see the output. So here you can see, for example, that I have my Redis works running. So you see the, the output of the Redis container and uh, some failures. but. Each green line, it's a task from GoCover. So each time you go to GoCover, it will talk to Vault and ask Mesos to run a, a Docker container. And it worked really, really great. The integration was uh, really, really simple. So I was talking about having multiple infrastructures. Uh, for example, right now with GoCover, I have one box in uh, on DigitalOcean and Ubuntu, and one box on uh, OVH uh, on Fedora, and Mesos is running, Mesos, the slave is running on both of those machines, and I don't have to care. Tomorrow I could add a CentOS machine. Thanks to Docker, it will work the same way everywhere, so that's uh, really useful. So there is a small web UI to add tasks, so you specify CPUs, MEM, disk, and the Docker image and the command. So the UI is nice, but it's also based on REST. So basically, you do a post to Vault to start a task. You do a, a delete to kill the task and, and everything. So you know, you know how it works. Um, so that was it. So Vault is open source. You can uh, take a look at github.com slash Vault framework slash Vault. It's written entirely in Go. And it's a static binary. So it's really easy to install because you can simply double get the binary, and uh, you can chmod it, and just you can execute it. Everything is bundled. Even the web UI is inside the binary. So it's really, really easy to use. And I really encourage you to take a look, because I don't know personally lots of frameworks with uh, Docker integration right now. I know Marathon is supporting uh, Docker. I don't know about the other. But we did this framework with a simple code in mind, so it's really easy to code, and it can give you some hints of how to, to integrate Docker. So as I said earlier, 
adding Docker support is, was really easy to, to vault. The Mesos team did a great job on the Docker integration because basically if you look at the commit, we added 10 lines to vault and we had Docker support. If you look at the diff at the bottom, basically as I already said, we, had, we added the container info with the type equal Docker and uh, the Docker image. And that was it. It was working out of the box, and uh, it's uh, it's really really powerful. So that's it. Do you have questions? So how how are you getting uh, statistics from the the processes that are running in Docker to flow up through the analytic stuff that um, Ben showed? Uh, that's that Mesos is exposing through its APIs. How are you mapping all that stuff? So. By default, the Docker integration will uh, use, uh, will pass the right parameter to Docker. So when you start to limit memory or CPUs, uh, Mesos will add uh, the dash uh, C and dash uh, M parameters to Docker. So that's, that's how it's contained. And after to involve to get the small uh, shards, I just go to the master state, and everything is up to date. So, yeah. So the uh, the real time monitoring that uh, that that API was now exposing. So, what's the you know like CPU or network utilization of those processes that are running in Docker now? How yeah. do they flow back out? Yeah. So I don't know right now, but I'm pretty sure it will work. Some stuff is not. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I guess Ben can. Tell you more about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, it, it's just a container like every other container that, that we've always run. So you get, you get all the stats that we've always been collecting for all the other containers as well. It's really first class Docker support, yeah. So with the Mesos Docker integration, uh, there's need for a registry. Is all the uh, stuff downloaded from the registry or does Mesos uh, handle the, the actual container distribution across the, uh, the cluster? Mesos with, will do a Docker pool from the registry. So each slave will do its own Docker pool. Okay, so basically you, have, you need to have a very scalable registry in order to do that and a good internet connection if you're using the public one, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Let's take a moment and thank our speaker, Victor. Thank you very much.